economists don't have the answer for that or have very incomplete answer to that because oftentimes they don't see the root causes of some of these things and don't get engaged enough in, in with 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 others to uh, to actually solve these problems they just remain fairly superficial about it it's not i i am contesting the premise of the question which is that you know economics is useful when it comes to practical things like efficiency like um, optimality like uh, working out the relationship between the price and quantity of of uh, commodities but we have a problem when it comes to non commodities like clean air you know which has no price because nobody owns it and so on the externalities it is true that externalities throw a huge spanner in the works of our economic analysis but we don't need externalities for our economic analysis to be shown to be absolutely relevant in a world which evolves through time in which there is space distance and in which human beings are not sociopaths economists uh, are at our best when the question uh, in, involved uh, pertains to efficient markets when markets are perfectly competitive and they clear and everybody shares the same information we're really good at modeling that setting and that of course is where we start when we teach economics to our students but when we move beyond that to wider issues that involve imperfect competition and market power and asymmetric information and poorly defined uh property rights uh our our, our models are less adequate the questions you raise about growth uh about um uh, equity fairness uh uh climate change they're a different type of questions they're not just about the allocation of scarce resources and efficiency there's more that we have to consider in trying to answer those questions because you know creativity it's not obvious that it is a scarce resource it's not obvious there is a limit to this and that's why i think we kind of in some ways given ourselves a pretty limited question to answer when we start discussing those bigger questions uh, of climate change and and um Uh, inequality and gender and so on one of the problems is economics being isolated from the other social sciences essentially because economics has to embrace all of those things it has to have a sense of society it has to have a sense of history it has to understand these other social forces within which it it plays a part and i think it's the fact that economics has detached itself from those all that economists talk as if they are detached and as if this is a machine or if you like this is an engine that they tinker with and all they have to do is tinker with it and all will be well that i think is is what has been so dangerous about the impact of economics on society things like climate change things like uh, inequality things like the environment the role of technology those are also part of the human experience and i think the problem for economics has been we have something very powerful to say about part of the human experience but we've tended not to work with other part other people that have things to say about other parts of the human experience and i think economics is much more powerful as part of a, a you know kind of let's call it holistic or a, a more complete a view of what we're trying to accomplish for people at the end of the day so uh, it does to the extent that it provides uh uh the sort of the grounding for some of the questions that need to be asked uh because these these are not disconnected from uh, issues of production and consumption and profits and and capital uh but it's not all that is right so you cannot understand uh, the climate and and in particular you cannot try to uh force the uh theoretical framework that is used for economic systems uh into uh, uh other disciplines and and into the understanding of other type of phenomena how can we give practical content to the idea of sustainable development only by developing missing linkages between the urban industrial complex and the green complex technological technical economic and legal linkages economists can offer their theories and governments can propose policies but governments generally make bad choices 
ideologically and politically driven. They make worse cho choices than people themselves might make if left to themselves to decide how their money is spent. So I return to the ideal state in which governments restrict their interventions to organizing or providing what they do according to what they can do and ought to do. You can be an economist who is, you know, absolutely against carbon, absolutely against racism. You can be the most enlightened economist in the world. And yet when you pick up your, your, when you pick up your computer and start to work, uh, the work that you do through your profession can actually exacerbate all of the problems that you mean to fight as an individual. The profession is fundamentally corrupt, not in terms of money. There is some money corruption in the profession, but I'm not talking about that. It's intellectually corrupt. And until that, until the fundamental intellectual corruption of economics is eliminated, the profession as a profession cannot help our society sort of address any of the, 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 the fundamental problems. The brain economy is the economy which is increasingly knowledge intense, where uh, cerebral skills, brain skills are increasingly paramount to stay engaged in the economy and engaged in the workforce. Um, the brain economy is an economy where brain health disorders are going are, are a big deal now and are going to be increasingly burdens, burdensome in society. And um, the brain economy is an economy where we need to have resilience, increasingly higher and higher levels of resilience to cope with coming shocks, uh, which are highly predicted in our society in the future, such as climate shocks, uh, future financial shocks, um, etc.